drip, drip, drip. That damn sound of leaking water has plagued me ever since I came stuck in the became stuck in this place. I understand that they can't make a place that is perfect, but still, I think I at least deserve some peace. Anyway, I wanted to write down my thoughts, seeing as I won't be able to tell anyone about it soon. I won't be able to tell anything, any, anyone anything, actually. I'm a convict on death row, awaiting execution via, via lethal injection. I was convicted for a premeditated murder. I don't deny this, but they don't know the whole story. No one does, and I can't simply die without anyone knowing. So I decided to write down and give it to Blackwell, the co. Watching us in here. It started six weeks ago, or six months ago, in eastern Seattle. I always lived there in ghettos and some such places because I was orphaned as a child. Nobody wants a kid to live in a place like that. So I never, uh, so I was never adopted. I was kicked out to live on my own when I was 12. It didn't matter to me though because of her. We met when I was still in the orphanage, I think I was five, and we became friends under strange circumstances. I have been playing in the attic, I had been playing, and as usual, and I, as I usually was, taking part in spiders, and I happened to find, you may think it was sick, but when you're growing up without activity or loved ones, you pick up strange habits. Eventually, I peered out the open window of the rear wall and saw her staring at me. I freaked out. Our orphanage was separate by gender, so seeing a girl that was was a rare circumstance to me. She laughed a bit and called me over, to which I obliged. After slinking over, she began to tell me her story, who she was, and what she liked. I couldn't quiet that girl if I couldn't quiet that girl if she tried. She avoided telling me her name though. In return I never told her mine. We we visited only sport sporadically the next few months. I never learned her name. Then the nightclothes came. If you don't already know they're a gang that started out near my home. That and made their money off prostitution and child labor. They came, they made everything harder on us, writing our orphanage for supplies and money and the like. And we ended up having to pay them, just so we wouldn't get killed. That didn't stop them from taking some of us, though most of my brothers were taking, including the girl. I was heartbroken. The girl was the only thing that made my life less of a hell. And they took her away. I was as weak and perilous as any of the other kids, though. So there was nothing I could do aside from bawling on the windowsill. Then they let me go to live my life. I was nearly catatonic because of everything that I'd been through, but I lived. I got a job and a nice home, considering. The Nilos wouldn't have that. They came to me and threatened me again for money. Day after day, I was sick of it one day. When I was 16, I was sick and tired of them ransacking my former home, holding me at gunpoint and desecrating my house with their filth. I started with Remy, the guy who came first to rob me. I quartered him and smashed his skull in with a cinder block. It was like a spider. I thought, the limb, limp, the body splattered everywhere. I wrapped him up in a tarp and sent him back to their main building. Nothing happened until three or more men broke down my storm and stormed my house three weeks later. I had planned for it though. I led one off of the farthest hallway of the building and slit his throat with a snapped piece of piping. The second was put down much easier, begging me not to kill him after seeing his friend. It didn't stop me. I leaned in and forced my fingers through his eyes twisting them and breaking through his skull. He fell silently. I smiled, 
spinning my hand and when after the last he tried to run. I am ma I actually managed to get far. But they taught me something from the raids in the orphanage. No man can outrun a bullet. It is a spine crippling him in the midsection down. I pulled him back into my house while he cried the entire way. I would have pitied him, but what should I have? He'd need to learn not to mess with me. So I laid him on the living room table and grabbed a hacksaw from my shed. I remember the screams he made as I cut off his limbs, one by one. Oh, but I didn't let him die. That would have been much too much of a blessing. I wrapped him up by his two friends and sent them back just like Remy. That girl's head was sent back to me in retaliation. I cooked it for dinner and moved on. Eventually, the police got me. It was only a matter of time, but I had fun while it lasted. After all, that girl was with me forever, and she and the Nilos won't mess with the orphanage again. Injection doesn't seem that bad. Now that I think about it, those thugs had a worse fate for me after all.